We got you where we're going, so you're on your own. <laughs> This call to order. Um, Sarah always gets a time, 12 of 11 of 3. And um, I wasn't, I, I think everybody has now introduced themselves. Um, Mary Ellen uh, Barnes is on the phone from Lincoln County Regional Planning. And um, so we need to prove the minutes. I wasn't there. So do I have a motion? I make a motion for the second minute. Second. Seconded. Okay. Uh, uh, all approved. What am I supposed to say? I forgot. What did you say? Okay. Motion passed. Motion passed. Thank you. So, um, Evan and I have uh, talked a little bit with um, Mark. No, we haven't talked, well, anyway, with Mark and um, Susan Corbett in terms of the um, subcontracts that we need to be able to do the planning, the infrastructure planning and the digital so equity planning. Facility. And so the materials that you got are updated um, scope of services for each of them. Trying to get the meeting on the phone. Um, uh, no. get, get I think the Mark's scene. proposal is pretty much what we got last time and what he's done for other Towns. Uh, so a few I later, think you mean? Susan, similarly, right she oh, was certainly right willing. What do you mean? Yeah, but I can't see anybody. Oh, from far away? Uh, are we okay with setup? Or, yes. or um, so, Evan and I talked with Susan this week. And Marty, I know you talked with Dennis about the mechanics of getting this stuff done. Uh, Krista Thorpe from Island Institute could not uh, join us today, but she said the check was on the way to the town because they did get the tax form that they needed from the town. Um, so we should be fine with our $15,000 budget for this. And um, the contract for the infrastructure planning has to be put out to bid. It's well over the $2,500 limit. And this is the scope of services that Mark um, was suggesting. And I think this is, uh, we should probably discuss this if there's any update to what um, people want to have done in this. Um, there are examples of what he's done for other towns both for Southport and for the Mid Coast Internet Coalition. I didn't circulate those. It would be pretty similar, except the data would be for Wiscasset. If he were to do other towns, he would charge 7,500 if we go it alone. If we do other towns, hopefully Woolwich and um, uh, Dresden join us, it would be 7,000 apiece. But he has to do um, the groundwork on each one, and nothing has been done for Woolwich yet, even though he included, he, he still has to update everything, but the, um, he had done the planning for Wiscasset and Dresden back in 20, 2019, I think it was. So um, this pretty much looks good to me. Um, Evan, you've been looking at these things more than I have in Dermisville in Newcastle. Is there anything um, <clears throat> on the infrastructure one that you think needs any editing or difference? Or anybody else for that matter? From, from my point of view, the, um, a lot of it is the, um, the, the mapping of, of where assets are and it depends what he can get hold of and what a new fiber network architecture would look like and the financial modeling would be very um, helpful to us particularly um, he's going to go pros and cons of different kinds of ways of going about this we've already talked a lot about it but the other thing is we would have a, um, one plan that we could put on the website 
and it becomes an educational tool for selling it to the town. That's what the other towns have done. So the importance of some of this is to put it all in one place on the website, the tenant's website. Um, the only thing I might ask that the ad is, um, like under number four, it says current incumbents. And aside from Spectrum and then LCI, it's local and consolidated as our other incumbent. Um, any other info on the other providers within the state? So GWI, Pioneer, Hotelco, and... You mean on the rates or whether they're gonna come in? Well, just passing. necessarily, you know, is in, it says here, can you access LCI's assets? And it's just like, at, the, at this point, LCI is as relevant as all the other people. So it's just, we don't need to stop, stop looking at LCI for okay. any other different providers. So, um, yeah, we could do that. I mean, it's more what he can find out there, competitors right. in different That's ways. What, saying, what, other, what other information? What we do have and what you provided was what the present costing cost is for different levels of service, as well as gigabit, which is what else uh, Consolidate is offering in the bigger cities. And I don't know if you off. shared that with I'll everybody. I'll print that off too. I don't think everybody has a copy of it. Um, so are you suggesting that he adjust, uh, modify this to include that? Include uh, other? Well, that's the thing is, I don't know exactly what he would, add but we would also we would like as much information on any other provider i suppose um odelco oh, i've some ads on yeah. television they got like 450 miles they're supposed to be yeah. coming into the state do we know where they're going yeah they've, all, they've been in the state in certain towns where they can get the subsidies to do it they were proposing to go into the camden area because they would do that without a subsidy. It's dense enough that they didn't need a subsidy up there. And they were going to go in there, but I think Consolidated, um, you know, upended them because Consolidated was bigger and, and is, could conceivably be more competitive in pricing. Um, but I, I mean, it's not bad to know where they could go. Yeah, um, they, could go they could go anywhere just like any other company. It's just a matter of what they're gonna do on their own and what, public money and grant money goes into it to make it happen. Do they provide anything different than anybody else? No. They've got some a couple better rates for where they are. Yeah. But and I'm trying to I'm gonna print that off and I know it may not have any bearing on what we're talking about now, but it, I don't know it was Lincoln County News that was casting paper that Southport got a million and a half dollars from the federal government. Not South, not South Port, uh, uh, yes. Somerville. Somerville. Yeah. Somerville and Jefferson got were a part of something called the NTIA. No, this is coach. Maybe it was South Bristol. Well, no, not South Bristol. Southport bonded out. Their own money. Yep. Yep. Two up to two million, and um, Mary Ellen might be able to explain it better as to what they're what they've been up to lately. Well, um, yeah, we can all read about a little bit in the paper, but they did, they, that's their own money that they have, that approximately $2 million. They've also applied for a Connect Me grant to try to bring that down a little bit because it's all tax dollars, if you will. So they'll know, they'll know in a few weeks whether they've got that additional assistance from Connect Me, um, but it's their own money at this moment. Definitely it's their own money. Where people become competitive for grants is when they have almost nothing. The more rural areas and the problem that we have in this castle um, in some ways it served us well as that we had better connection than they do through cable but cable through spectrum but cable is becoming outmoded and it's also a monopoly in town it's you know yeah. so they can raise the prices anytime so so potentially could another provider if they're up yeah, they did this one so um uh I, I actually don't like, I know what he's talking about. This is a buzzword. Should you overbuild the current internet networks? And most of the incumbents, I don't know if people know that term, incumbent means the larger internet providers, um, particularly um, you know, the national ones like Spectrum or Consolidated. And many of them have used this argument 
We already have infrastructure. We do not need to overbuild. It's already here. Why are you doing that? Well, they're not overbuilding with fiber. They have cable and, and for the future, um, that is not good enough <laughs> for my opinion and many others' opinion. So it's a, it's a kind of buzzword, but I think he was um, wanting to address that issue in the plan in case anybody raises it of why you might want to do this or you should do this uh, because it, Spectrum is not providing um, robust, affordable um, fiber at this point. Um, and even if they were, there's a question of, you know, they're going to need subsidies. That's why they haven't put it in already because we're not dense enough. So then there's the question of um, where those subsidies go and, and which provider and how we do this. But that's why you put that word in there, overbuilt. Um, but I think the financial modeling particularly will be very helpful for people to see what this is going to cost if you do uh, different scenarios. You know, you do the whole town. That should be, I think, the purpose. I mean, there's very little of the town that actually has fiber, to my knowledge. The, the library does, the schools do, because they're under a special pro program. Um, the town office and the county office put it in. From my knowledge, I don't think any other town. What? Main Yankee had it. Yeah, they would have it. And so, as so does Tron, they put it in. Some of the bigger places we put it in um, because it was in their self interest to pay the higher cost to get. Yeah, well, they've had it for yeah. seven years. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of other residential areas around downtown, other parts, um, unless they put it in and paid the cost, it's not here. So, what I printed out was the price comparisons from all the providers in the state. I try to get this all on one page. That's why I made it long, but it didn't make a difference. But um, in the left-hand column, we put I put the uh, 100 by 100 service of what people charge or the equivalent if they don't offer that. So you can see they're kind of all right in the same universe um, with different options as you go up. So consolidated service is called Fidium, and that's what they're expanding right now. And their base package is 250 over 250 for 60 bucks for one year and then 85 and then you can see all the other options of what people are doing then on the second page it's some comparisons of what both spectrum and comcast do and lci also requires that we take the telephone service well that is only over in their area so oh, okay. I, don't know, I don't know what they do once they, outside the area. Once okay. they get like in their boat area. Yeah. I am here is based in um Aristic in Holden, but they've been active and wanting to go to different parts of the state. Premium choice is the main company, is Or is it bought out? Premium choice is the uh, old Greenville cable company. So they do like Monson up to Greenville. And a yeah. bunch of places in between. But and now that there's money from the state for grants, all these companies who pretty much were focused in certain areas are now kind of more open to moving around, or so it seems from the outside looking in. I see the standard you have is 100 over 100 or equivalent. Correct. But I see that some of these offer numbers that are much larger. Yeah. So that's 100. like. 100, 100 by 100 is the line for the state for a column you served. And then everybody else, if they had a different base package for, so I, I didn't cover anything lower than that until I got over to the right hand column there. Is it conceivable that they could bring it into town and have one level for somebody and a larger level for somebody else? Yep. So, like, that's what I'm. Um, if you look at the Fidium one where it says 250 over 250 and it's $60 to the right there, they sell one gig over one gig. So that's a thousand megabits for $70 a month and then 95. So, and then some of these other ones have multiple different packages like Pioneer has a 100 over 100, a 300 over 300, 500 and one gig. 
So they've all got hit, and some of them have smaller options, like premium okay. choice as 25 over 25 for 40 bucks. Of course, these are the introductory rates. And some of them, some, some of them are introductory that I could tell, and then some of them don't do that. So like Pioneer doesn't advertise that they have an introductory rate, they just okay. maintain the same rate, but with LCI that you're in a three-year contract, GWI you're in a two-year lock, Consolidated has an intro rate. Um, it's all over the place. But just to give you an idea as to what companies are actually offering. And we didn't ask Axiom whether, but we don't need to yet. We're not trying to find a provider, whether they provide it. He's got 500 over 500. Yeah, no, he, uh, they basically, basically the long and the short of it is they'll all come up with, if you're a big enough customer like that, then they'll make it happen. Yeah. Once you have fiber, it seems to be the scenario. Yeah. So any other questions about the pricing, um, at least as background for this? And Sorry, is with LCI speed so upload speeds is so up, uh, low. I think that they're, uh, if I had to venture a guess, it's because they have only wanted to just compete with Spectrum. I don't know why they do it. I don't think it's a good business decision because they're not really um, exceeding themselves in terms of performance. They're not really poaching any customers from Spectrum, but yeah. So, it, so um, is it one of the towns going with LCI? Why would they want? I mean, that. So they, over. They was giving me that so over price. in the whole Bristol Peninsula. Yeah. They're the incumbent phone company, so they own half of the polls. Mm -hmm. So within a whole project, it's four hundred dollars a poll for a new company to get their wire put on. So if they're already the incumbent, then that saves whatever it is four hundreds of thousands, if not a million dollars, to put in. Are people are going to be satisfied with that slow speed. They, they haven't been get they haven't been getting customers, and I think that that's something that they're they're talking about changing, but. I'm holding my breath until they actually offer just straight symmetrical service as a base package because they're not they're not helping themselves at all. But Marx described them as operating like a telephone company, which means to say slow. <laughs> so, so is the fact that and you spoke to me about this before the spectrum was already on the poles, is that going to be a stepping uh, place for us to stub our toe? Not for the not for the fact of getting on the poles, it's the fact of overbuilding it. So you already have a mid-tier service, but then putting on a faster service the way the grants are, they don't. I mean, the poles have the capacity. To yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo almost, almost everywhere. There's some places where there's going to be a pole in somebody's driveway. Like, you, do you have one in your driveway? Yes. And do you own that, you know? Or yes. is, where do they own it? So that's the thing where some places they end up with too many poles or it's too low, so it'll sag. So if you don't have a 45 foot pole or whatever, then they say, oh, well, we can't, you need to put in a newer pole. Upgrade the pole. Right. And that's part of stuff on the road too, of actual pole upgrades where they've got to switch out their poles. Yeah, I didn't know that they were getting slow up to LCI. Oh, how fast? Yeah, we, so when we were doing the Newcastle and Dan Riscata project, LCI gave numbers as to how many subscribers they had out of their possible area, and they were getting less than 20% in some places. In most places, your target, when you bring in a fiber company, you're offering higher services. They're usually targeting at, targeting at 30 or 40%, but they're not outperforming any type of metric. And I think that that's been a obstacle for them to get financing because they're not meeting their own goals. So that's kind of why why LCI and why I don't know. Just some background on that. So does anybody have any other we did talk about I mentioned the only bill too because it's also a buzzword I think while you were out just yep. how it's been used. So um, are there any other uh, companies that we could send us out to bid? That would basically when we get down the road it would, that would be the next thing that we would do after we get a plan and figure out different scenarios, put out an RFI or an RFP 
request for information or, or proposal to build the town out. Were you talking about the plan or were you talking about you were, no, were you were talking about plan. Oh, right. Okay. Have this been out to other well we um, would there are a couple others that do it, but um right. Mark happens to be a provider. Yeah, Mark Mark is a provider that does it. Right. But most of them don't. So the other ones are um, uh, help me remember uh, the one up in Mission Bangor. and Mission and um, what's his name? Casco Bay Advisors. Yeah. And then Tilson Technology does more engineering stuff, I guess. So we would put it out to those groups. Those groups for the planning. Yeah, and it's a it's a relatively small contract. So and then we would have to evaluate. You know whether you know what what the best rule is. So at what point do we do that? Well, we need to do it now. I think um, pretty pretty shortly. Yeah. Um, I want to get the other two towns up to speed. So hopefully, putting in there um, planning at print planning grant applications in the next few weeks. To the state and then saying because they both will which and have both put in 7500 so try and get a little bit more from the state or any other people at the island institute so those money or not we'll find that out too the only other source is main community fund but are they open no i don't think so yeah so this is helpful to get started asking well proposal. And that's the thing going in with going in with three towns do we all meet together and say all right we're going to all send the same rfp or for planning right. but well, i wouldn't want to wait too long i mean it, it it's a difference of 500 dollars for us it also however down the road if we can show this cooperation we do get points on state on, on state grants if you come in um with or, you know more than one town, and you also come in possibly with um, a municipally owned structure. We're not even there yet. But yeah. Those are the things you get your points. That's why the only thing I'm, I think we can probably be a little bit more patient about because I don't think that there's necessarily the rush because we're months and we're now they're just finishing up this year's budget right now, so it's like we're nine months away from getting more serious, which I know everything's going wait, to take Wait, who's finishing up their budget? Oh, the towns. Oh, the towns, yeah. Or they've already voted. So I'm not hot to try it without at least saying that the town that will let you dress want to come along, is my point. Okay. So you're I, gonna, I you're think gonna, if we get put back a month, that's not that big of a deal. Okay. Do people want to go with that? We wait a month to put it out. Um, we could also oh. step back with Mark. Personally, I mean, I'd, I'd be surprised if somebody could match Mark, Mark's numbers. Um, the other thing we have to consider is when they could get to it. Yeah, that's right. Right. You're not wrong about that. Yeah. So if we, if we could approach the other two options and find out how time wise. Yeah. Oh, or they may not be interested in right. We'll find out. Yeah, I mean, they reply. They may like, no, we're married, not interested. Right. Which is definitely a possibility. So, so has anybody else made a proposal besides Axel? No, we're going to go hunting for them because that's that's the market right now. No one's coming to us. We have to go to all of them. Yeah. See, we know Axel. I mean, I've known him for years, but or Mark for years. But um, they also did the seven town regional plan for Lincoln County, which we were part of. So um, yeah, Mark's been in and out of here a lot. And if they Perfect scenario. What, what kind of time line are we looking at? Hopefully, uh, less than hopefully like a month or less turnaround. I think we make pretty. And then after that, tech installation. Say we agree to them. Uh -huh. What kind of a timeline? Yeah, like a month, like a month. That's but then you saying. have to put then, it out to bid to actually uh, do the installation. It's another uh, story. On is that what you're asking? Yeah, and, and, well, I have a bunch of questions. <laughs> yeah, no, that's keep, keep, that's asking. Um, keep asking. Keep um, asking. Well, I, I just wonder, you know, from, from the ground up, um, uh, what do we need out of the town of Wisconsin, these residents? That, that's the biggest question. And we'll know a lot about more more about that <laughs> when we get a plan back. 
Yeah. And we get some fiscal numbers and then. You know, we've got to probably put a, a page of uh, questions that we might get put together so we know how to answer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There'll, there will definitely, the town will definitely need to put something up for this. The question, the, the goal is to try to reduce that amount as much as possible through different right. grants um, or lower And we have to sell them on what it's going to do for them. Yes, right. that's exactly right. Yeah. So on the high end, that's why we're, we're starting this off on the high end, getting a plan for a municipally owned system, because that would be the most expensive thing. It would be ideally a re revenue generating asset for the town that it gets contracted out for someone to operate it. So the town basically just has to own it, insure it, and then work out a contract as to who's going to run it, which has been done. So that's top dollar, most expensive option. You have to bond out money to pay for it. And then the subscribers end up paying back the difference on the bond. The, the other advantage of that is the town owns it. You, you're not subject to the whim of a private um, you company. You can control the rates in the future. Right. Right. We kind of talked about yeah. that. I, I, I support yeah. that idea. Yep. So definitely we want to at least set, like, if that isn't feasible to the town, if they don't, if they see the numbers and say, okay, if we bond out however many million, we can estimate based on this many subscribers to this many subscribers, how long it's going to take to pay the bond off. If that's not appetizing to the town, then we did the high end. And then we look at, well, let's pitch it to these private companies to see if they want to come in and privately own it. Because otherwise we're waiting for consolidated who may come or may never come is what it boils down to is what their long-term plans are. Is it three years, five, 10, 20? It's probably down in the bill because we don't have the density that other places are bigger, uh, are more profitable for them right now. If they're going to build. Do we know if there's any way we can market this to the outside world that, you know, we're going to have this ability here and, and when it's going to be in place? Yeah, I think it definitely starts once we get a plan back. And we get hard numbers to look at because I think what happens after that, once we start marketing, people want to know, well, what's the figure? What's the dollar figure? What's the, what are the numbers on it? And then until we get that, I don't know if we can answer super comfortably. There, there are other modifications, there are other possibilities um, in between a private company owning, you know, owning it and having a monopoly over it versus some kind of sharing. I mean, the town might not want to go in and own it totally, but there might be an investment in it so that there's um, yeah. more uh, skin in the game for the town if you do have a private um, um, provider. The other thing that other towns have done is they've gotten what's called social investors, particularly in their own towns. These tend to be the richer towns like um, um, uh, uh, Georgetown, for example. And Camden is looking, Camden Rockford are looking at this as well, to find a private family foundation or an individual who will step up and get their friends to invest as well. And it's very patient money because um, they're doing it for social purpose in their town. I, I personally don't know what the landscape, I, I don't think we have the same capability here, but I don't know enough about that in West Castle, well, it would be something we'd explore. What, we what kind of swing does the Chiwoki Foundation have to do? In question. terms of in terms of raising what, money, raising money, and I mean they they you know they're well they're they're a grant, lot of people all over the state. Yeah, they're they're grant funded. It's a different funding from what this is. Yeah, we Willard was on our committee before. He's very tied up right now. Um, they're very supportive of this, but they don't raise this kind of money. It's different. And um, so there are other private investment cooperative models that maybe we don't own it totally or, you know, but maybe we get profits back. We share profits if we don't own it. And that's something that the states brought up with the new authority that they created. The connectivity authority is the option for them to own some of the infrastructure. So they haven't come up with any literature on it yet. It's exactly what they plan to do to give out loans so that the state can own it themselves or. Is there any way that we could uh, offer it to individual residents? Oh, a share. As a profit share. So, I mean, it could be that we did something like that. You know, I mean, I don't know. I have a friend in Ohio 
that after he's in the power grid for five years, they start sending him a check. Yeah, it's a cooperative, right? Yeah, cooperative. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the it's a possibility. They're just the only people that have done anything close to it yet. It's Georgetown, yeah. right. where they basically started their own private company to own it. And then it just gets off. Well, actually, uh, Great Diamond Island, or one of the little guys, yeah. did it as well because they had the. But aside from the mega rich islands and places that are connected by ferry that live in their own la la land. Yeah, that's where did it through the yeah. tax base. Because every, every island has had a great situation where they, yeah, Islesboro, where they just took it out to bond, the whole town, everybody gets the same rate. You pay $360 a year. And then that's it. And but, that was a fight to get that. You know, why? I don't even look at internet, that kind of thing, you know, from some of the members of town. But, but yeah, it could something, it's possible. Yeah. So, I mean, all of all. You gotta look at everything. Yeah, yeah. we have to look and at that's, everything. Yeah. And, and that's we, the we whole might, uh, sorry. We might ask um, Mark to look at some of the models that have had the private investment in it. I don't think he yes. specifies that particularly in here. Mary Ellen, did you have ideas? What was the question, Carla? <laughs> well, it's just Mark Mark did not specify looking at these public private models in terms of the investment, private investment. And we might ask him to just write that up if you, if you have. I, no, I, I think that's important because I think as you laid out beginning a few minutes ago, you're going for this municipal thing, which is a high level or maybe a high expense. Um, and then you want to look at the other options. And I think the Georgetown option is interesting. And I think we're going to have to be looking, as we've discovered with all the competition for the federal dollars for a variety of resources that towns can tap, tap into. So I, I really hope that you'll include the private sector, pri private public sector piece there. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, we really need this to be able to do the education effort out there. And we may be delayed a month or so to see if Woolwich and um, and Dresden can get their act together or we can you can get the grants going. Do you need any, or do you need help with these grants or you've got no it shouldn't be a, one of the the Woolwich communications committee seemed like they were ready to tackle it. So I just need to reach out to them and be like, hey, how's it come along? And then Dresden, I've talked with their town administrator a bunch and he's pretty involved and they're trying to still get their committee on a regular basis because there's a bunch of people interested and I have talked to some of the people that are leading that charge to get them all in the same, just tell me when to show up and get them all in the same room and we'll all talk and figure out what level of involvement people want to have. So just a matter of touching base again with them and seeing where they're at. Okay. So we're going to do that quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then the mechanism, I don't know exactly, there must be a boilerplate for putting out a contract for the town of West Castle, right? I mean, Dusty, I don't know. In an RFP. In an RFP. Yeah. I'm sure they have, I'm sure they must have a board. If the town is not one, they really, then we can come up with one based on what other towns have done. Yeah. So we need, I think we should get that prepared, just knowing yeah. how it's going to go out. Sure. Um, and we have another one too. Any more discussion about this? I mean, there, there's tons of resources about what's going on in the state if you want to be more knowledgeable, um, Larry. Um, and and I, I, I encourage people to become them, to join the Maine Broadband Coalition because what's going on, it's NBC, Maine Broadband Coalition, and you know, you just sign up for it and you get reports of what's going on and the different models and educational things. And, um, you know, I'm on the policy committee for that group, but I have less um, stature than I used to have when I was working. <laughs> but I like to listen to what, what's happening up at the state as well. So, um, so that's a really good place to, to become knowledgeable. The other one that I tune into nationally is Benton Foundation. They have all the different kinds of funding and what's happening. And I can send, I'll send links out. I'll make a note. Um, uh, and I mean, there continues to be a, a, a lot of money and we're gonna talk about the digital equity contract as well, digital equity inclusion, um, because there's gonna be a lot of money for affordability, particularly around um, and, and training 
and helping people um, you know, develop digital skills. And I know that's what you're most focused on right now, uh, in term, particularly in terms of seniors. Um, so I'll send those I'm probably going to be attending a, a meeting with a group of senior groups called the Summit, which centered out of Richmond. And it takes in Richmond, Lich, Lich, yeah, Richmond, Litchfield, Bowden, Bowden Head. It goes as far north as Oakland, Gardner. Uh, there's as many, sometimes as many as 17 people in the meeting. And I'm wondering if are there questions I should be asking these people about what they're doing? Sure. Sure. It helps to know what you know the surrounding towns are doing. I'm, I'm not as familiar with what's happening in central Maine. <laughs> So um, I, some of them are going with LCI, but um, yeah, that was familiar. What, what isn't happening, or it doesn't appear to be, is that their urban areas are not jumping on this, partly because they have density, but a lot of them don't have good connection. You'll well, often, consolidated, it's all coming into the mall now. Yeah, they're so. gonna they're gonna get it now, but um, they will. Uh, they may be big enough, especially you know Portland, Lewis, and whatever. They have competition, so that. Um, it might bring prices down, but um, um, you know some of the worst connections are right downtown. You know, <laughs> in, the, in the richest areas of Portland, that they cannot connect. And even Andrew Butcher, who now heads the main connectivity authority, lives on the west end of Portland. He's often thrown off, <laughs> as is so. Like Mark has a terrible connection in Fargo, I and mean, it's just very ironic. You know, that this happens. Does the state but, have any kind of plan? To be able to get some points out to some real rural areas. I mean, like the West Forks or, you know. Yeah. There's yeah. a whole ton of different things that have been going on. And yeah, I could talk for an hour. Yeah. About, <laughs> I mean, that's about the all, I didn't mean to order. No, no, no. Okay. But like uh, with the Somerville Jefferson area, they got a federal grant that was like a couple different places within Maine got it. They got like 27 million right out of. I think the grand total was 224 million. So about 10% out of that one grant fund was awarded to places in Maine that are so undercovered that they had, I mean, nothing to speak of, just phone line. That, that's been the priority for the state's limited money. Yeah. Um, like before we got, before the pandemic, before ARPA money that came in federally, the priority was totally these very remote towns, rural areas that had nothing. Yeah, I, and, I don't know. These towns of Maine, they're, they're, they border territories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. How, do, how do their kids do virtual schooling? I mean, that. that yeah, a lot. Be, yeah. I don't know. What, they, uh, there was a program that Mary Ellen knows more about than I do that they did right at the beginning of the pandemic called Connect Kids or something. Right. And basically, the company found out what road that wasn't served that had kids on it that needed service and immediately just checks were cut and lines were run. And, so a lot of kids got hooked up that way. So they set up hot points, so to speak. No, yeah. they ran cable. Ran cable. Yeah. 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 Like but, have, but schools also give out the hot points. Yeah. Chris Cassett has a hot spot program where people that don't have. Yeah, because there were some dark spots. In oh, yeah. There's plenty of, yeah, all over. See, if we get any money from the state, we have to identify where those are because that's going to give us the money to go ahead. Those are the priorities. The yeah. State. Priority, yeah. We have to identify those. We're considered otherwise pretty much by like 99% served. No, underserved. Underserved. Now. Yeah, that's right. Underserved. It's been the same for 15 years, but now everything's new. Yeah, the terminology is new because the demand for this and the, and the level of it is, is recognized as needing to be higher. Um, but I, I would get any intelligence anywhere you go of what people are doing. I think it's always helpful to know. Well, uh, I'm asking this question because I used to work at Maine Yankee and I know they were the first to bring fiber. bring fiber in, but I don't know at what level they have. Yeah. And, and if somebody could reach out to them, maybe what we're doing, they'd be willing to kick something in to help, you know, to well, get them might. to 500 over 500. Yeah, I, I, the issue is that, I don't know, Maine Yankee, I, I don't know, but it's, you know, if you want to reach out to them, at some point when we know what the financing is and whether they, you know, whether we need investors or something and they're, let, you know, they're a company in West Asset, whether they put any money up. But I think we need to know what the numbers are before we do that. 
in terms of the costs. Yeah, I know they, they have a new plan to superintend. I'd have to find out who yeah. to talk to. But it's, it's building out the networks. I mean, you can't build off of them. It would be a donation or something like that. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, the other thing that I really wanted to talk about was um, the um, second plan, which I, which Dennis gave you. Dennis. Evan, mm -hmm. <laughs> Evan gave you. We, we just spoke with Susan Corbett a couple of days ago, and Susan heads the National Digital Equities Inclusion Center, and her headquarters is here in this passage at Mary Ann's office. And she's, um, she's proposing to help us do a digital equity inclusion plan, which includes many of the topics that we touched on um she's done this elsewhere it's kind of boilerplate but it, it could be very helpful in organizing us particularly in the interim while we're trying to put together an infrastructure plan it's conceivable we could be more quickly visible in the community doing something you know doing something that's important and educating people on um, if they don't already know it, the importance of digital literacy and access to appropriate infrastructure. And we can use this, from my point of view, as a tool for outreach as well. So what she's got in here um, is demographic analysis. And what's good here is she buys the most up-to-date um, five-year survey from the American Community Survey. And that will be coming, uh, she said, what, in the next week or so? I forgot what she said, a couple of weeks. And so she pulls out all the numbers here. We could do it laboriously, looking at the census, which is kind of big and a mess, but it's all there. And she can, she can do cross tabs, she can do all kinds of stuff with it that will give us a picture of basic demographics, but most importantly also is the information on broadband adoption, uh, which also includes the number of households with a computer and with broadband internet subscription. Now this gives it to us in the aggregate. We don't know exactly where these people are, but I think it also helps us pitch, um, you know, the need for this in Wisconsin. Uh, and then she'll, um, she'll also help quickly identify all the programs that provide uh, um, help with affordability. We particularly have a lot right now. There will be more coming on uh, line. What is it called? The American Connectivity Project? You know? Program, yeah, Program. I was just going to print that off. And the thing about Susan is she's not only recognized in name as a guru on this, but she's a national guru on this, hence the word National Digital Equity Center, which was funded by Microsoft. And um, she knows where all the money is, <laughs> which is not bad. So my feeling is, let's just do this and it will require us and reaching out to other partners and people in the community who hopefully will help volunteer on this. I did raise with her, and it's been a question in my mind. It's very volunteer uh, dependent, this, what she's proposing. The work would be done mostly by us and volunteers, except for the demographic analysis. Um, and what she knows about, you know, the background for affordability and where the money is. Um, but, um, See, where was I on this? It, it's, I think it's important to get it in one place. And I think we could try to get some volunteers. What my fear is, is um, people are so busy, or many people are, who have these skills, that it may be hard to tap that on any regular basis. But it's, it's something we could attempt and see how well we do. Do we have any idea what the time requirement is? What, to do this? For the volunteer. Oh, I think it can be whatever. I know she doesn't take high school students. Um, 
I think they have to be supervised. You won't let high school students do it independently. Any volunteer that comes into this is checked out, you know, in terms of security. Um, but I think we could also set what would work in our community in terms of what the commitment is. When we meet with her, um, we, could, we would have a better idea of what's worked in different communities. But it could also help if we had participation with Woolwich and um, um, Dresden, both financially and also sharing that experience. Um, if we do it with them, the cost comes down, you know, by 500, I think it is per, per group. Now, Evan had some questions about the pricing that she or the me mechanics of working with other towns and what she was going to offer us. I don't know if you want to raise that here on this. Just, uh, because this could go much she added on the bottom of this? What? Yeah, so if we go on to page three, $24.99, and then each additional town is $1,000. And I want, I, I guess, if and when we go in, I think we should just go in as the group that wants to continue and wants to do it. I know you want to step on all of your progress plans every step of the way, as far as just let's do it already. But well, um, I think I think it. I know um, because if it's twenty five hundred plus an extra two thousand, that's forty five hundred divided by three instead of twenty five hundred. We would only be putting in fifteen hundred. So I don't know, Justin, what do you think? <laughs> it's the budget question. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to wait too long for it. That's the thing. That's right. I, I think we need momentum. I mean, this is a separate thing than the planning. Right. Yeah. But same, see if they yeah. want to go along with us. Yep. To I me, mean, this is good publicity to have this out there. So make sure. Yeah. Main goal. Mary Ellen, have you have you had experience? I know we've talked about this, but have you had experience yet with other towns doing it and been on the ground watching what they're doing? No, no, I don't think any I don't think anyone has in, in, in Lincoln County. Um, so, so I I think the fact that the fact that you folks are considering doing it or doing it with two other towns, I think that's exciting, and I think. To round out what you're hoping to do as a town, um, I I think this this digital equity piece is going to help create the the story about why, why you need improved services and why you need more competitive services so i think it's part of a whole um but um no i don't think um i think for example somerville probably had a decent plan in their nti application but i don't think they've implemented it yet so i think you'd be the yeah. first yeah um i'm just um i'm just thinking about keeping momentum and interest Okay. And I mean, yep. the infrastructure is really important while the money is there if we can capture it. Again, we won't be at the head of the line because of our demographics and the fact that we have cable. But if other towns aren't ready, my premise is they can't wait that long. They have to get the money. Right. Right. So, yeah, I mean, we could start by setting a goal until what you guys think we should wait until. June. So did uh, Dresden and Woolwich um, approve some money? Yeah, they both did. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's just a matter of they each have 7,500 committed now. So right. we wanted to jump in, get them a grant. And I guess there is no point in saying no to at least jumping into this right. first, because then they could already say that they've had that money in a grant application. Do we have to wait till their town meetings? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, they've already approved it. They've already approved it. We just have to, yeah. So what well, will it cost each town if we get three involved? For the national digital equity thing? Um 1500 Oh, so could we do so like we could ask them if they want to exactly join yeah. in? So they were doing 7500 or they going for the same grant from no I'm gonna try and help them apply for a state one, which is I think five thousand. Is that correct, Mary Ellen? What they usually are. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you could pencil in that for a reasonable, yeah. Yes, because the Island Institute, we were probably some of the last to get money out of their fund for the year, is what I'm guessing. Yes. So where do we stand now, money-wise? We're at fifteen thousand, right? And 
and we may not spend it all. We're being right. careful. No, we, this this feasibility study will be this suggested in the that would just cost us what you said fifteen hundred. If the other if the other if the other, other towns, towns come in. Otherwise, right. it would cost us twenty nine ninety nine, and the reason for that is twenty five hundred. The town has to bid it out. So exactly. once we do that, that kind of shows the public and the state that we're down at home. Yep, that we're definitely doing something. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, you got you got people that could benefit from knowledge about. Yeah, us, in, us included. I, I think yeah. that's proactive. You know, that's yeah. being proactive, and it's it's going to help us answer the objections that I. I'm certain questions that we can't even think of yet. Yep. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. I, how about middle of May? <laughs> to try here. Yeah. Have some I mean, Susan's ready, you know. I mean, yeah. she's trying, she won't have the demographic stuff for a couple of weeks, but. Yeah. Well, and we're ready too, because we're the board approved right. your budget. Right. And that's on the budget. So the sooner we can get, you know, an answer from all what's in Dresden, the cheaper it gets. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's what we need to impress on that. It sounds like they've already approved it too. They just, what are we waiting for exactly? Them for, to send in a grant application. They don't have enough money to do both. Right, right. that's yeah. the thing. Right now they only have 7,500. They don't have enough. So in the grant application, they can write down, okay, well, we raised this much money. We've already spent this X on whatever. So that would still count. It's just a matter of wanting to secure the funds before pulling the trigger. So I, I think, um, you know, we should talk with Dennis about just getting this ready and then we can fill in the final number of whether we're... Yeah, no, I think we can definitely put together an RFP for the infrastructure part. Right. That's the 7,000. And yeah, there's no sense in waiting on that. We can put together an RFP in the next couple of weeks. But that's Surface. the 7,000 is dependent on the right, other tenants exactly. as well. But if we put together so, a decent RFP, then we can just give it to them and... Right. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Right. And then I'm going to try and, for our meetings going forward, I'll try and get somebody from Woolwich or Dresden and any other ones that are interested so that everybody's at least on the same page as to what we're all doing. Not that we're all working together jointly at the hip, but... They need as much leadership as as anybody. So, are you going to look into the how to get the RFP ready, or is that? Krista sent me uh, some samples. Okay. I haven't looked at them yet. That okay. other towns have used. So that would be great. It's just a matter of. Krista, can you get him a copy of whatever the town uses as a board of place for this? As a what? Uh, you know, for an RFP. RFP. Oh yeah. They're going to adopt it to their stuff anyway, probably. Um, okay, so we should we should just get on that this week, maybe. Yep. Because I'm going to be gone. It's so like, sure, go. go so the RFP <laughs> has to be approved by the town manager? Or I don't think so. I don't know. I can go ahead. Yeah, I can't remember what the order of operations is, they but the other board get to do it. <laughs> but they, yeah, because that, that's approved also for, for this, you know, because we approved your budget, but we have to come back and approve the expense. So, yeah. Or, or approve and I think they had some policy right. that was, yeah. Okay. yeah. I think there was some policy of anything that gets sent down has to have board approval. Yeah. So, well, if it's, if it's more than $2,500. Oh, I thought it was just yeah, that's anything you were sending out. Yeah. Like we could just send, hit send. Everybody had to be in the no. Well, twenty five hundred under twenty five, we don't have to put it out to bid for it all. Right. So, but any communication had to be approved. Yeah. To companies and otherwise, I thought. So we're we're we don't really have a time limit here, but we do in terms of attention span, probably. Yes. Um, sure. So I did nothing on um, uh, where I'm looking at first my agenda. I did nothing on the survey yet. I was a little bit out of commission at the beginning of the week. Um. But when I get back uh, from Philadelphia, I will pay attention to this. But it's also part of the, uh, doing a survey in town is also part of the outreach in um, town. The idea is to try to engage people about what their po post pandemic, particularly post pandemic experience has been with their broadband and internet connections. And to try to also get a sense whether um, if they had an affordable option, which whether they would switch. And we don't want to make this very long. We may 
in some instances where we know that people don't have internet connection, um, we may, in a limited area, ask for or give people uh, envelopes and written surveys to mail back. But the town got very low percentage rate when they did that for the comprehensive plan. I think if we were going to, we could put it together online, do a joint one between the other two towns. Mm -hmm. So then they can just someone logs in and they say, what town do you live in? Click that, put it online for like two months, and then also have people at the polls on crime every day yeah, just to advertise idea. it and get people involved. Does the town have any demographic information on what the population is and what age group they are? That sort of thing. It's all in the updated census. Yeah. I don't know if they keep it on the on the website, but it's all because the influx of seniors into this town in the last four or five years, and even the last year especially. Well, it's it's hard to it's hard to know it year by year, year, but given that we just had a recent ten year survey uh, census, we do have the more up to date census information. And what Susan will be getting, and I don't remember, I think it's just coming out, is what's called the Americans, um, um, uh, what's it called, Americans something survey. Community survey. Community survey. And that one is not, that one does not take every individual door to door like, like you do with a census. It's a sampling, but it's pretty accurate, or it's a good, very good indicator. What you've got. So they update that um, every several years. It's either three or five. Well, I, I guess what I'm shooting at is getting seniors to fill out. Right. This kind of thing is, you know, difficult. Very, very difficult. I mean, they, they look at that as they, yeah, they, they, would, they would require insurance coming in the mail. <laughs> well, do you think it would work if, I mean, the other way to do it is, and we haven't. That's one way to do it, but the other way to do it is, you know, you go to the senior center and say, would you fill this out while we're here? Um, or just ask them the 10 questions. Yeah. I don't have people fill it up and say, hey, will you just ask them. Whichever might work and say, you know, as part of your- But system. it's just as much of- Well, you, you could ask questions as a group and take a consensus and maybe get it done just as quick. Um, sure. Yeah, maybe, but- um, but it's I just as much ad numbers. it's we just as much numbers. well it's just as much advertising as it is any numbers I mean we're not going to get yeah I mean it's not going to be a scientific survey that's for sure oh. um, but I have this gut feeling to it and the bottom line is we're going to end up competing with Netflix well, we don't show them somehow that this is going to be able to turn their spectrum over into something that's comparable and maybe faster and gives them a better picture they're not going to want to take the time to even change. Yeah, that could be a thing. Yeah. Well, we would also ask questions of, you know, have your has your service been interrupted? You know, do you have reliable service? Because that's a big thing if you don't have enough bandwidth. And with fiber, that's one of the selling points of fiber that you have that reliability. You only have one strand that goes only to your household, whereas you're sharing it with cable. And God knows about, you know, um, of wireless that's often weather or other dependent whether you have reliability depends on what company you have so. right right so um so we would also ask questions not just on cost but is your what's what's your experience been has it been reliable you know what do you you know are, what are you paying conceivably would you would you be willing to switch if we could offer what you have or less with more reliable service. I mean, there are a bunch of questionnaires that have already been done. One, one is South Florida. I mean, there have been a lot of them done. My, I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. What we don't want to do is do something so big and consuming that people will not fill it out or we can't do a short, a short. Yeah, because seniors don't have an, atten an attention span. Right, right. We want to make it short and sweet and the, and the most important questions we want to know and also use it as an outreach and education. Well, that's the biggest mistake that Microsoft has made. They just keep changing and changing and changing and changing. And you know, when you get into a group of seniors, that's the you know, that's the biggest enemy. Yeah. Well me, I'm one, I, I go to him. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean <laughs> how, how many people do you know that are looking for somebody to just graduate high school program their phone or yep. 
Yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's, that's, it's real. Teaching and, usually it, and, yeah, yeah. and then it usually ends up with people giving up. And that's part of what the classes that um, Susan's group puts on is any kind of class you can imagine pretty much to deal with what you're I, I think that's where the senior summit would come in handy because yeah. you might not get more than eight in the town of Wiscasset. If I go there and I say, you come to Wiscasset and we're going to have these training experiences every Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening at six o'clock and you're going to have 25 people as opposed to 40, it yep. might fly a lot better. Yep. It's possible. That would be, you know, it'd be good publicity too. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, and I, I, think, is interested. I, I, I mean, Dwayne Gould is very, very easy to get along with and he, he would he would he could set up a time frame that we could use it wouldn't interfere with anybody else. And I mean they, the place is set up to be an emergency center, so they got everything there. Right. Right. How many do you usually get at your meetings? I think you said it goes off in the winter. Well, right? I, I, I have a strange setup. We have two 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 uh, Monday and Friday we have people come in and so okay on Tuesday morning and Thursday evening, we have privilege groups that come in. And the morning group on Tuesday has been 20 to 24 people. And the Thursday night group is around 18. And then we have two meals a month. And right now we're only uh, only averaging 19 to 20. But come June, that number could bounce to 40 to 60, depending on what the meal is and you know what's going on in the community. So um I have about somewhere around 50 people who are paying due to, to belong to the senior center itself. And sometimes I only will hear from them once a year when we have an annual meeting, and, I'm, and they may not even show up for that with a free meeting. Yeah. yeah. That's, what <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that, that's what I, I mean about. It's hard to get to these people. It's hard, it's to, hard to communicate with these people. Yep. You know, you, you've got to find a hook to get into that. You're not going to just send them a piece of paper in the mail and expect them to fill it out. Yep. It's not going to happen. Yeah, yep. no, I, agree. I agree. I did a lot of that in Davis. Scott to understand that I'm a senior. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a lot of people still feel that way. I mean, I'm showing my age, being the age that I am, things have changed so much in the last 50 years and what the things people have available for them to do. Right. And that's very I haven't been bored in years. What's that? <laughs> I haven't been bored in years. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I think it's, I mean, even people with more, you know, aptitude on the internet, if we want people to answer these questions, we're going to have to be creative to do it short and sweet. And, and I almost think that if you gave this questionnaire to the fire department, one of their meetings, the average age yeah. of those people sure. is under 25. Yeah. Okay. And uh, right now we do have about 20, 22 or 23 members. That here's another example. Most of my life they were 45 members. Yeah. And you were standing in line to get in. Now we have 22, and we can't find guys to drive the trucks. They're afraid of it. Okay. I don't know, afraid is not, they're apprehensive, okay? And when I was there, you came to practice and if you got in the truck first, you got the driver. <laughs> you didn't get there, you didn't get the driver, okay? Because it, that was the biggest game in town for a guy that was just coming out of high school, okay? It was exciting, you know, you get to drive a big truck and, but that stuff doesn't, that doesn't interest people as much as it did before. No, you're right. So, but if we wanted to get different groups, I don't know about the um, uh, AM, uh, the ambulance people. Yeah, the ambulance. Well, yeah. they don't even have an ambulance service here anymore. Everybody's doing an open deal. They come from everywhere to work here. Oh, I see. So it's you, not... you couldn't do a yeah. So yeah. it's just built. It's shift filling. It's not like yeah, you shift have filling actual that. staff. But I mean, I don't. Yeah. So other examples. I mean, I don't know. We might go to the chamber and do this. At one of their meetings. We'll go to everybody once we know what we're doing. Yeah, our church groups. What? Whoever. Yeah. Yeah. The American Legion is what we do. 
So, I mean, that, that would be a better way to, and plus you have more interaction of what is this about, why is it important, you know, what is the town doing, what's the blood bank going to be doing. So, um, well, they came to us. We have a formal meeting every month, and then we have coffee every Wednesday morning. We have just as many people for coffee as we do at our meeting. So she came in and talked to us about, you know, maybe doing a, a weekly thing in a paper that they could put out. Mm -hmm. Well, we got 10 active members, and two days a week we're counting cans to raise money. Okay. It's like that in any organization. Mm -hmm. And basically, 50% of the American Legion people are, are over 50, maybe even more. Yep. And a lot of them are over 60. Okay, so that's their biggest activity of the week or the month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to paint a picture. Paint a picture <laughs> of what's going on in this town. I mean, from 1969 when I graduated till now, it's, it's black and white. It's so different. Mm -hmm. And everybody's got a phone, and most of their entertainment is right there. Yeah. You know, if you can prove to them that that's <laughs> going to improve their Wi Fi, they'll, all, they'll be all on board. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that may be the angle you need to come from. That we're going to increase the public Wi-Fi. In the well, towers. there is a provision in here. Where are the, where's the public Wi-Fi, and do we need more of it? That's part of what yes, Susan that's part is, of the, what Susan part is. Of the the town of the problem with the town of this castle it is it goes just like this. Yeah. And Wi-Fi is line of sight. I had to finally buy a Verizon package to be able to have, answer my phone, from my cell phone, in my house. Unicell. Isn't even. Yeah, yeah. I, I, have, to I, I have to go out the yard. I already says spectrum's good, but I hate spectrums. No, no. Uh, well, spectrum ties in with Verizon's line. Oh, okay. So, um, is there anything else on this agenda? Um, anyway, where's my agenda go? Okay, scope of services. Thank you. Oh, uh, one other thing. I, I mean, we haven't come to agreement about how to do this, but I think we have concrete proposals um, even to start the community outreach, um, whether it's talking about what the community is doing or doing, you know, talking about the um, um, digital equity. We're not quite there yet with the digital equity plan. Um, if we have opportunities, I think we should start doing it and maybe um, but we've got to know what we're going to talk about before we do it because yep. you don't want to start out and say something and it happens not be right or yeah. make you look bad. Because between now and when we can't talk about the cables, the financing of it. a lot's got to take we, place. We can't talk about what it's going to cost yet. You're right. I mean, we don't know. That's going to be the first question they're going to ask. Okay, yep. so good point. Good point. I mean, we wait everybody, I mean, 60% of this town is on fixed yeah. income. Yeah. Yeah, and I know we get people interested in the digital equity at the start. And then, you know, while the plan is going on, you get a lot of people involved. And like you said, through all these different organizations, you're going to get a decent percentage of people. I mean, we don't know how many who has moved into this town in the last two years. We could have eight millionaires sitting down. <laughs> well, we could put it out of the paper and say we're starting this thing and we need people to, for volunteers. We can do that. We can do outreach to different organizations saying we need help with this. And we might get some of the new people that, you know, younger digital skills, you know, clone in. Wouldn't be bad. Um, <laughs> and um, be able well, to do it. How, how many committees in the town of this have empty spaces? Uh, I mean, planning board, all, all of that stuff. They all have school board. I mean, when, when I turned in my application to Mr. Simmons, he asked my wife, he says, is, is he interested in anything else? Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. they don't have people to fill. Yep. I mean, I, I'll bet you there's too much of committee space to go for that. No, yeah, probably. It's really not usually it is. It's a lot of work and people have to think about it to put themselves out, much less a select person <laughs> to think about it and put yourself out. Um, 
Okay, so we'll 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 get back on um, preparing, getting ready to do the um, uh, RFPs. Uh, I'll circle back with Susan to say where we're at, trying to see if the other towns will come, so we don't do a complicated, um, you know, budgeting issue. We'd rather know up front what the cost is going to be for this passing. And um, the last thing on this was Dennis sent me um, a notice of a webinar that Freddie Flaherty, which is a big um, main a law firm, they all have their public interest groups. And um, they're doing a, a broadband webinar, um, 9 to 11, MMA, the main municipal association is promoting that. Um, we could do it at their time rate if we want to use our budget for it. I mean, I think probably a lot of it, if I don't know if one of you wants to do it and just hear what they have to say, part of it will be, it might be interesting to know how the lawyers are positioning this. What's the general topic? Um, you know, the broadband and the expansion of broadband. I can send it out to everybody. Oh, okay. Is there a hold in public meeting? What's that? No, I think it's, no, it's a webinar you have to pay. I mean, you know, so the towns get a reduced rate. So we said, if you want to use your budget, we can do it. We can, we can have you use your reduced rate. So I don't know. I mean, I probably, don't on them having any new information. It's not going to be new. It's more of the positioning and how they position it and how much they're positioning the private companies versus municipal and stuff like that. Okay, we don't, we don't have to do that. <laughs> Anybody wants to go for it. Um, anything else or anything else to be put on the agenda next time? Yeah, let's figure out our meeting yeah. schedule. Oh yeah, meeting schedule. We thought about <laughs> doing it every other week, at least putting it in so it's consistent right. with the town calendar. Rather than every other week, I'd rather have it either be the first and third oh, that's or the second right. and fourth. That way when you're on a five week thing or whatever. And that's right, you mentioned And that. I'm sure there would be times when we would use an extra week to have the new information built up so we don't have to feel like we we're meeting in the when do we soon? have to do the, the roadwork survey here? That's going to be a good question. Probably in the next six weeks would be a good time to go look at it. But also, um, part of part of the planning is hopefully they're going to go, they're going to figure out the most of it, and then we can go look at where we actually. Let me explain it better. We'll be able to go and look at it with a magnifying glass exactly places where. They're not sure because yeah. pretty much we'll be able to get an overhead view, but then we won't know if it's like, is it one house or two houses at the end of this dead end row that don't have it, that type of thing. So it would be just a little bit of fact finding. But yeah. Um, so today is the first Thursday. So can you move the first and third Thursdays of the month? And if you don't need a meeting, you can just. Answer. That would be the 21st. Okay. Yeah. What, this, for this month. Yeah. 20, next month is the 21st. And then in May, it's the 5th and the 19th. And I don't know what they do on their website. If, there's, if they advertise, I it's already blockade for me. Yeah. We just, we're going to start having a daytime, daytime lunch. It's at noon time. Yeah, on Thursdays. On Thursday, twenty yeah. first is the first one. So, we yeah. <laughs> so do, well, we can't do Fridays. We could switch. We can adjust the. Days. We could adjust the time to ten. I mean, we're yeah. running. Friday would be a better. Uh, they don't. Friday is a more open day. For yeah, they don't. They don't the town doesn't want us to do anything on Friday because they close the office. That's well, the only thing. There. Well, we can meet in the fire department space, and this is big as this. Um, I don't think it's a matter of the office being open. I think it's the being during the office business hours. Mm -hmm. They want to have the committee meeting during the meeting. But I can, I can go and drive by it. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I can talk to the chief and we let the space out for other groups. Well, why don't you clarify that? And if, um, okay. I mean, there's would if we did it, they have Wi Fi over there, just like we do yeah. here. Would, would 10 o'clock work for you earlier in the morning work for you on that day or not? Uh, no, because I need to be there. Set up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
I mean, we could we could change the day. That's not a. Um, yeah. it's not a yeah. Fr Fridays for me. I have things to do on Monday through one Monday through Wednesday, and I've been using Thursday as my open day. And now we've been meeting. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, I haven't had a, the last ten. The other thing is we could do it after the lunch too. We could do a later meeting in the afternoon. Yeah, if you wanted to do it at like two thirty, that would be. Yeah, or three. It doesn't matter to me. You guys. Two thirty. And, and I and I gotta say that meeting in person. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> I mean, I've been. I've been. I've yeah, been, well, you've only been. A, you've only been a black rectangle. Yeah, yeah months, I'm, just, so. I'm just a question mark on that. Yeah. Well, how about for me Thursday at two thirty or so would be good. Okay. Is that do, do those times work for everybody else? Right. Yeah. It's up to everybody else. I can make whatever. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah. let's do that. And then. And I'll set. I'll talk to the town about putting it on the website. Yes. Yeah. Well, they've also got this little calendar right out in the hallway. Oh, that you just write it on? No, really. You can ask about it, but it's got the calendar for every committee. And it's color coded, so then everybody walks by. It says, "Oh, the project maybe this time." So I'm the Because you've got just just like Larry said, you got just the amount of people that are walking by that calendar, then they are looking at the town website. Right. Town website. If you want an idea to die, send it there. <laughs> Yeah, well, you can't you can't get voting results on the website. No, the website's trash. Yeah, it's absolutely garbage. It's, it's, the town doesn't have a website. Right. Where are you going to talk with Dennis about? He's got he's got us uploaded now, so oh, Dennis, as long as he just keeps to it and does it once a week, I think. It's the top of the so I think we've got so we're going to be in person or virtually. No, we need in person. person, yeah. I agree with you. And then if anybody else can't show, I, I can ask more questions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I expect I like seeing people. I, I'm social. <laughs>